Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. I am Professor Tomney, and we are going to start wrapping up our enolate chemistry lecture series today with the final reaction that we are going to study for enolates, which is the Michaels reaction. The Michaels reaction involves an enolate that is going to attack an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So that is coming up on the channel right now. All right, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you using Chem Complete for all of your chemistry lecture needs. Let's go ahead and get started. So for the Michaels reaction, we are going to need access to some form of an alpha carbon that has a deprotonatable alpha hydrogen. So an aldehyde is a good example in this case. And then we are also going to need an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Now, typically it's called an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, although you could have aldehydes and other groups here, but we'll keep it as a ketone. So here is the carbonyl group. And then you're talking about the alpha position and the beta position having a double bond. That's where the unsaturated term comes from. So for right now, we'll go ahead and we'll keep this as a hydrogen here. And let's go ahead and do a methyl here and a hydrogen here. Okay. So in the Michaels reaction, the enolate is going to form using a base as usual. So we would have something along the lines of hydroxide or some other similar base. And that base is going to deprotonate and create the enolate that is needed. So we would come over to the alpha carbon, take one of those hydrogens, that would give electrons over to the carbon and what we would end up with is the enolate structure for this aldehyde and then that nucleophile can go out and can attack the alpha beta unsaturated ketone so when you have this nucleophile formed it will come in and attack the beta position when you're looking at the michaels reaction so we would expect this enolate to come into this carbon right here because remember, when we are talking about these carbonyl compounds, the term alpha is referring to any carbon that is directly next to the carbonyl group, and then beta would be one carbon removed from that. So when we say that this attacks the beta position, it is attacking that second position away from the carbonyl. Now, when this happens, this carbon cannot host five bonds at a time. So these pi electrons need to migrate and move over to create a double bond here. And then almost like a chain reaction, the pi electrons that are involved in the carbonyl need to move up into the oxygen in order to give an additional lone pair there. So when we have that, the resulting intermediate that we are going to find is that we will have the alpha beta unsaturated ketone in a new form where the oxygen is now an oxide ion. We have migrated the carbon-carbon double bond directly next to that. And then we don't want to forget what's attached here. So we've got a hydrogen here. This is now a single bond because that double bond has migrated. We've got another carbon here. And then we've got, again, the groups that would be present there. So the CH3, we've got the H, and then don't forget that the enolate itself came in. So that's the fourth bond to this carbon, the enolate being the CH2 group. And then that also still has its aldehyde functionality right here. So this is the intermediate we would expect. This can then interact with water. So whether there is water around because the hydroxide was in an aqueous environment or the hydroxide picking up a hydrogen when it formed the enolate, we have H2O readily available in this step of the reaction. The oxide can come grab one of those protons to regenerate the base catalyst. And then what we end up with is a compound that is known as an enol. Now the term enol is going to be ene for alkene and then all for alcohol. So you can see as I'm drawing it out here, what we have is an alkene, the carbon-carbon double bond, that is directly adjacent to a um, alcohol. 
And so that's where the term enol is coming from, is that we've got the alcohol portionality, and then we also have the alkene portionality. Okay, so this compound would be the official result of the Michaels reaction. Now there is something important to consider here, and that's that the enol is really a less stable form. The correct term that we use is a tautomer. So when we talk about tautomers, tautomers are basically similar to isotopes of one another, or uh, excuse me, not isotopes, isomers of one another, where they can shift back and forth, okay? And there's a uh, topic called tautomerization, which is the shifting back and forth between these two. But a tautomer is going to interact by taking this hydrogen on the alcohol and sending it down to this carbon right here and then this pi bond coming up here. So it's basically an internal rearrangement or restructuring of the compound and that will give a ketone based product and it turns out that the keto form most of the time is going to be highly favored over the enol form. So enols are usually less than 1% of the product mixture and then the keto tautomer makes up the much larger portion of that mixture. It's the more stable of the two tautomers and so it tends to be favored far more often in solution. Okay, and so that completes the enolate reaction for Michaels. So again, just to recap what we've got going on here, you have an alpha beta unsaturated ketone and you also have some other group that can act as an enolate. The base will come in to deprotonate that alpha hydrogen and you will get the enolate. The enolate is going to act as a nucleophile and that nucleophile is going to attack the beta position on the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. When it does that, the attachment site is going to need to let go of some of these pi electrons. They will migrate over to the next carbon-carbin bond, and then as a result of that migration, the pi electrons from the carbonyl will be placed onto the oxygen to give an extra lone pair to that oxygen. So then the intermediate that we get is this oxide that is adjacent to the carbon-carbon double bond. And you can see that the enolate has now come in and attached. And then the protonation using water of that oxide gives the enol product. And then it will tautomerize into the more stable keto product that we would expect as a result of the Michaels reaction. So that is it. Head on over to chemcomplete.com if you are interested in free resources. We have lots of things that can help you out over there as you proceed through the semester. Hitting the subscribe button will keep you up to date whenever I post anything. You're welcome to leave questions and I'll try to get back to you. Dropping a like on the video helps to support us as well. And we also have guides available for sale over at chemcomplete.com. Very affordable guides, including aldehyde and ketone guides. We have guides regarding uh, aromatics and aromaticity. We have substitution and elimination reactions, spectroscopy if you're struggling with NMR, all sorts of things. Even general guides like how to pass organic chemistry. So anyway, that's enough. Thank you guys so much for the support and using ChemComplete as your learning series. I will see everybody in the next lecture. Take care.